Plenty of people have asked me about my perspective on various aspects of sexuality, but it just never really comes up for the videos because I like to take things that have converged together, you know, several people asking about the same kind of topic and, and I come across several articles or have several conversations. Simply put, a lot of things have come together to where I'm going to talk about erectile dysfunction and certain sexual aspects of our culture in general. Uh, I've been having conversations recently with several people from our culture, specifically sexually retarded people, which is the norm. People who have been slowed and stupefied and don't understand their sexuality whatsoever. So they buy into various terms of the culture, gay, straight, transgendered, erectile dysfunction, not frigid anymore. We'll get to that. So here is my analysis of about half of the video from a guy named Gary Wilson, a, I suppose, according to his website, Your Brain on Porn, maybe it's not his website, but yourbrainonporn.com forward slash erectile dysfunction and porn. That gives you a video by Gary Johnson, about 13 minutes long. I analyze about seven minutes of it. Gary Johnson is an anatomy and physiology teacher. Gary Johnson, he explains the physiology of erections, how overstimulation via today's internet, today's internet porn can create erectile dysfunction, even in young men, and how others have recovered. The first thing we should do, and I should have done this before I started up, I'm going to define for you erectile dysfunction in case you don't know what it means. You kind of get the gist and you might have an idea, but it's important. I just defined the word erection for no reason. Erectile dysfunction is defined as difficulty in achieving or maintaining an erection of the penis. Impotence. Uh, so, of course, by that definition, you know, women are eternally erect, you know, they have erectile dysfunction because they don't have penises. Actually, that's a bit of a joke, but more on that later, because by that definition, women actually do have erectile dysfunction. A little bit of a preview, women increasingly have a difficult time achieving or maintaining an erection in their male partners. But, of course, we're not here to blame women, we're here to blame men, or at least that's what Gary Wilson's going to do, that's what the culture at large does in reference to erectile dysfunction. Of course, we have a culture of sexually retarded people in general, so let's address erectile dysfunction and porn by Gary Wilson. First thing I'm going to do, besides the definition that I mentioned for erectile dysfunction, define a couple, <clears throat> define a couple of other terms. So I say, uh, I have a lot of notes written down, don't mind me. I'm going to use some definitions to set the stage demonstrating our culture's sexual retardation. Uh, number one is, well, these are questions that lead to a definition. What do you call a man and woman who cannot become aroused sexually? Well, according to science in Sigmund Freud's time, you call the woman frigid, spelled correctly, and the man He's just a victim of his woman's frigidness or frigidity. He's a victim. She's just, she has a medical problem. She would be diagnosed as frigid if she couldn't get wet, if sex was uncomfortable for her. She's frigid. That was the science. Now you laugh. LOL, OMG, moving on. Two. Today, what do you call a man and a woman who cannot become aroused? Well, according to the science of today, the man has erectile dysfunction and some other terms that we'll get into, like impotence. And the woman, well, she's a victim of her man's erectile dysfunction. Or if she can't be aroused, we do what people on past Sigmund Freud's silly age. Oh, she doesn't have frigidity. Back then, they didn't even realize that the clitoris needs to be stimulated and she wants foreplay, etc. Oh, so it wasn't a clinical disease of being frigid. It was she wasn't being engaged fully sexually. Moving on, now we, here we are today with the male equivalent of being frigid. Erectile dysfunction, he just can't get it up. 
No, that's a clinical disease. We have pills for that. They had pills for be women being frigid. Meanwhile, you actually engage women sexually. What do you know? They're not frigid. But what about men? Well, if stand-up comedy, which is to say the philosophy of our culture, has taught you anything, uh, getting getting a man excited is easy. You know, I could I have men wrapped around my finger, says the the woman who is sexually unappealing. Like, oh, the girls will get me anything from a guy. Guys are easy to control sexually. Okay. Then when you eventually have to settle on one, what do you know? These guys all seem to have erectile dysfunction. They seem to not be able to get it up. It might have something to do with the increasing erectile dysfunction of our women. Namely, their inability to be the sex objects that they accepted being. That's their role. Be sexually appealing. Why? Well, that way, men work jobs they hate to buy you stuff you don't need. They'll give you undue reverence, undue credibility. They'll fight and die in wars because you are... They're sexual oasis, and you can't even do that right. Moving forward, we want to define pornography, because this is an important aspect, because this is erectile dysfunction and pornography. Pornography is causing erectile dysfunction. What is erectile dysfunction? For now, we'll lazily say men not being able to get it up, and porn is causing that. Seems like porn causes men to get it up. So what is pornography? Well, I'm going to define it reasonably as any depiction this is how our culture sees it any depiction whatsoever of sexuality it's all pornography well no i mean as long as it's done tastefully then it's hard not according to plenty of people well as long as it doesn't involve pain eventually you realize that the most widely accepted definition of pornography is not the sexual information that you don't agree with. No, it's just anything sexual recorded. You cannot, for the sake of sex ed, show a guy pounding a girl doggy style and be like, see kids, you see that there? He can get deeper because he's in the position. No, that's pornography. Any depiction of sexuality. Sodomy, defined. This is pretty straightforward. It's actually kind of a dictionary definition. Unnatural sex. And this becomes important later because as cultures decide to change what is unnatural, you know, then sodomy, the sodomy laws change. Plenty of people think sodomy is butt sex. No. For example, the same sodomy laws in the UCMJ, the Uniformed Code of Military Justice, the United States military has to hold to a separate set of laws in addition to our laws. You can't have sodomy in the military. And you always hear about these weird laws in some state where it's like, it's still legal to do such and such, but they just don't act on it. In the military, it's still illegal to give or receive a blowjob. Still illegal to have doggy style sex. This is, those are unnatural sex under the sodomy laws. As we change our sensibilities, it's like, well, no, that's not sodomy anymore. Sodomy is just bestiality or BDSM. Those are still covered because, you know. but sodomy, unnatural sex. This will be coming important later. So here we go. This is this is my an analysis of certain paragraphs, uh, excerpts from the video that I mentioned. This um, huh, I completely lost it, but the uh, erectile dysfunction and porn by Gary Wilson. I want to go back to it. Just go back. There we go. Your brain on porn. So first, this Gary Johnson person quotes some sexual retard who is now on board with the idea that he should be the scapegoat for how pornography is terrible. You know, I was doing things wrong. I'm, I'm the scapegoat. It's not that we have a culture that shames and degrades any sexuality and then expects men to engage it and, and men to initiate it with women. And women can think he's a monster or sweet depending on you know her mood or whether or not he has money or the look that she likes no instead this person has this to say gary johnson quotes this person as bolstering his cause quote you know you should be aroused he's talking about he ha is having erectile dysfunction he's talking about his thought process you know you should be aroused by real women but for some reason you can't then you try consciously to make yourself aroused which is basically a, impossible. And once this fails, you spiral into depression and anxiety. So physicians really need to be aware of what is going on with this. 
So first off, we have a person who's sexually retarded, who got into watching porn not to explore themselves or understand sexuality, but because we have a culture that criminalizes most sexuality, calls all recorded sexuality pornography, and creates an environment where he is the hostile person anytime he engages in sexuality. And what do you know? He just found porn, a secret, quiet place to, to know anything whatsoever, and he became addicted to it. And so this person is saying, you know you should be aroused by real women. So meanwhile, what does that tell us? That tells us that homosexuals have erectile dysfunction by this definition. I'm not aroused by real women. Well, yeah, that's because you're, you have erectile dysfunction. Well, no, I'm homosexual. Oh, then that's a whole other problem. Well, no, it's not. There's nothing wrong with being homosexual anymore. Well, if we're defining erectile dysfunction as not being able to be aroused by a real woman, then plenty of women have erectile dysfunction. They can't be aroused by real women. Meanwhile, of course, the, the actual point is, why should you be aroused by w real women? Does it need nothing more than to have no penis? That's what men are taught. So when they're not, all of a sudden there is the shame in everything. This person, Gary Wil Wilson, quotes this person and then later on talks about how it's not about shame or guilt. It's about neuroscience. We'll get into that. So you know you should be aroused by real women. You know, because a real man is aroused by real women. No matter how crappy the women are, no matter how unsexy they are, you should be aroused. And when you can't be, you for try to force yourself, which is taking your mind and saying like, I'm going to do it even though I'm not attracted to this person. It goes against my better judgment. And then eventually your body can't even, it combats with your mind. Your mind's like, no, seriously, I'm not going to get it up. This person is tedious. It's not fun to be with them sexually. Oh, you have a disease. You don't have coming to your senses and saying, wow, you, you should actually be more s satisfied with your sexual encounters than to get an erection and then lose the erection through orgasm. Oh, and then you want more than that? You've done that a lot with internet porn, and so now you actually expect more out of a partner than to be a series of moist and not so moist holes for you just to thrust in arbitrarily and, and awkwardly. Oh, you have a disease because you actually raise the bar for your expectations of sexuality. So Gary Wilson quotes this person as if this person has any validity or we should pay credence to this person. We should trust this person. Well, now this person would know they're sexually retarded. Well, then decidedly this person wouldn't know. They shouldn't. We shouldn't take their advice. Gary Johnson goes on further to talk about the forum on uh, presumably yourbrainonporn.com or some forum that he and his wife um, run. One of the things he mentions is that They've seen teenagers with erectile dysfunction. This is not normal, let me tell you, he says. Sure, guys in their teens and twenties can have occasional anxiety, but not chronic impotence. And what is impotence? We'll look at that. Unless, of course, they have a serious medical condition. Like back in the day when women had the serious medical condition of being frigid and needed to take pills and get psychotherapy. Why don't you get wet with your man? Uh, he never engages any part except for my whole, not my anything else. Inner thighs, clitoris, neck, mouth, breasts, nothing. He just goes right for my whole. Hmm, I see. The problem is you are frigid. What? So the problem is these people are impotent, and a teenager shouldn't have erectile dysfunction unless it's a medical condition. And then he goes on to say, it's very clear their ED, erectile dysfunction, was caused by heavy porn use. Because when they stayed off the porn, their erections and desires returned. Let's go back. He says um, it's not normal for teenagers to have erectile dysfunction. Sure, they can have occasional anxiety. You know what anxiety causes? Among other things, it causes suicide. One of the things I'm frequently saying is that boys and girls before gender roles become apparent in their early teens, before gender roles become apparent, they commit suicide very rarely and at about equal rates. As soon as gender roles become apparent, one of those gender roles being sex is a dirty thing, men you must initiate it if you ever expect to have it, you are the bad people of society. Right around those kind of rules put on boys, boys jump up to four times as likely to commit suicide as a woman. In their 20s, when, according to Gary Wilson, you can have occasional anxiety but not chronic impotence, suicide in men six times more often. You can look this up. This is Center for Disease Control Stats. 
So instead of occasional anxiety, but not in chronic impotence, more acute anxiety, constant anxiety, and far more likely to commit suicide because of, among other things, inability to perform sexually, inability to even have sexual partners, which wouldn't be too big of a deal if we didn't connect so much of your worth as a man to how how good of a partner you can get a hold of. You can't get a hold of any woman? What a loser. What kind of girl would want that loser? Those kind of things work. Guys committing suicide. The idea that teens with erectile dysfunction is, and we'll get into it a little more, but the idea that it's you must have a serious medical condition, it's arbitrary and, and completely useless as, as a, his... Um, the, the statement is very useless. But then he goes on to say, it's very clear that erectile dysfunction was caused by heavy porn use, meaning the access to seeing satisfying sex. That's what porn is. Oh, I'm seeing sec uh, satisfying sex and it's causing erectile dysfunction? Well, no. It was caused by heavy porn use because when they stayed off porn, their erections and desires returned. Erections and desires for what? we can assume they're talking about for their wives or for the people they should be having sex with. Meanwhile, you find out the person they should be having sex with is the only person they could, they had enough money or enough style or enough character to get, which was pretty low on the food chain. These people who would need to become addicted to porn more on that later. But these people, if they were with, you know, I'll just throw out really popular names, not my favorite names, but popular ones. If you have erectile dysfunction and you're with Jenna Jameson, not because she's a porn person, but because she knows how to help men enjoy sex, then you got a problem. If you were with Jenna Hayes, all the Jennas, and you don't like her blowjobs, you got a problem. If you're with awkward ass sexually retarded girl from our culture who's taught that she is the prize and she has to make you beg for it and then be awkward and crappy at it oh you you didn't get it up for that well yeah i think the problem is because you you saw pornography where people are enjoying themselves sexually and, and you just didn't feel quite satisfied being with this awkward crappy self-righteous hypocritical shell of a human being yeah, the problem is porn, not the way we socialize our women to be sexually worthless and sexually miserable themselves. That's a whole other story, women being sexually miserable. But nevertheless, we're blaming men for the fact they can't get it up with our increasingly worthless daughters. So no, not heavy porn use, but in fact, their erections return because of being, uh, what I say, deprived of porn. So this person says one more time, it's very clear their erectile dysfunction was caused by heavy porn use, because when they stayed off porn, their erections and desires returned. Let me tell you two stories put into one. When I was in boot camp for the military and when I was in jail for crimes, back when I was a teen in jail and then later uh, about 20 in boot camp, when you're sexually deprived, you don't get any sex in jail. I know you want to make the joke about men getting raped in jail. You can get sex, just get raped. Yeah, we know. Joking about men being raped is hilarious. Nevertheless, you don't have sex in jail, generally, and you don't have sex in boot camp. So let me tell you what happens, the idea of erections returning to normal. No, what happens is you become sexually retarded again, and anything that resembles the thing you're taught to worship, that's the thing you will absolutely worship. Speaking specifically, when I was in boot camp, simply put, ugly as hell girls, as long as they had some semblance, oh, long hair, any semblance, oh, they're a little more shaped, in the pants, you go crazy for it because of sexual deprivation, not because of, then you got rid of your heavy porn use and so now you're returning to normal. No, it was through deprivation. They put you in a sensory deprivation chamber where you can't see, hear, or anything. Then you come out, wow, the sun is really bright. You get put in a place, you can't look at any of these satisfying depictions of porn. And then you come out and you go, whoa, that non-man sure is sexy to me because I'm completely deprived. Same way in jail. When I was in jail, we had nothing but unattractive, there was actually one attractive woman, unattractive deputies, the people who run the, the jail. Anyone that was a woman, no matter how unattractive, the guys were just going and making excuses for why she was attractive. Like, man, did you see, um, 
won't even mention the names, not because it's it's not important. Did you see so and so? She looks so fine. Da, da, da. Oh man, her ass is this. Da, da. And meanwhile, they're like old, unattractive, not shaped particularly well. But when you're deprived, your expectations are very low. It's easy to control your focus sexually. So keep that in mind. That's the goal here. Is you know what heavy porn use does? Men can't be as controlled sexually. They can't work a job they hate to provide financial stability for a lifetime to a sexual retard who doesn't respect him. The problem is porn. Well, the problem is that men, the real Pandora's box has been opened and men realize, oh man, I can have sexual expectations. Usually they'll be dashed and I'll end up with impotence, the inability to maintain an erection, erectile dysfunction, or premature ejaculation, or ejaculation that takes too long. Nevertheless, they have this expectation. They see like, wow, you can enjoy sex. I'm seeing porn and people enjoying it. Yeah, now here is your prize that you worked so hard for. It doesn't respect you. It's getting increasingly more ugly. It doesn't know how to please you sexually. It doesn't even understand itself sexually. And the problem is porn. The problem is the making aware of how bad you have it. I was perfectly happy with my crappy sex partner until I saw people enjoying sex what? You can actually... Anyhow. So, where were we? Where are we um, then the, the Gary Wilson's video goes on to ways that erectile dysfunction manifests. Where are we on time? 21 minutes. Good Lord. Here we go. This is going to be a long video. Not too long. One. No spontaneous erections. That's a way that erectile dysfunction manifests. And then this idiot, Gary Johnson, who seems well-meaning generally, but I gotta call him an idiot for the fact he says things like this. Guys really love it when their morning wood comes screaming back. Ha 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 ha. So the idea that if you don't have spontaneous erections, it's because you have erectile dysfunction in official diagnosis because you watch too much porn. Guys don't love it when their morning wood comes back. There's no reason to have morning wood unless you're there ready to have sex with someone. But it's just, it's this churlish irreverence that is masquerading as, no, I'm, I'm not stubborn and stilted and I have indefensible ideas about how we should just blame men and tell them to change their behavior rather than, yeah, keep those high expectations and just teach your woman how to suck dick the way you like it or help her, you know, learn her own self so she won't be so miserable and make you miserable facilitate your own misery. This kind of joking, this guys love it when morning wood comes screaming back, he just moves on past that. No spontaneous erections and then just guys love it when their morning wood comes back. You know, stop stop watching porn, stop watching satisfying, you know, Latina point of view, and then you could have morning wood. My point is that this is one of the people who seems to want to help and he does these non unrespectable nonsense jokes tossed in here to kind of ease the mood well the mood is that men are getting scapegoated for the fact that they have sexual expectations and it's leading them to be dysfunctional among sexual retards so no morning wood not that important number two is not aroused by static porn like just a still image in fact, guys, and then he, just, he doesn't talk about that, but I'll address it, but I want to go on to everything else he said. In fact, guys need to escalate, guys, of course, because women can't be sexually, well, they can't have any dysfunctions that porn would help them through. Whoa, there are guys that can actually make a woman squirt. There are guys that can actually make a woman enjoy themselves or look like she's enjoying himself, herself. And then she has expectations. The man can't meet him. Does she have some problem? No, he's just not a real man. He can't overwhelm her with sexuality. Oh man, I saw a woman enjoying a 12 inch dick. I want a 12 inch dick. What do you know? That was all fantasy. You don't really want the 12 inch dick. No, some girls do, but plenty of girls think they do and then they end up with something they can't handle. But we don't call them dysfunctional. So um, guys need to elevate the level of porn, the extremeness, which again, since porn is anything sexual, extreme is just like, what? You know, bestiality, torture porn, rape porn. No, usually it's just like anal and the kind of stuff that, yeah, anyhow. Extreme porn is vague and undef uh, un undefined. It's just like the blanket term sodomy. And again, in the, in the military, technically you can't 
give or receive a blow job. You can't engage in doggy style. Those are unnatural still and until they change the definitions. But uh, not aroused by static porn is actually his point too. And that's interesting because, yeah, once you've seen whoever you're into, a guy or a girl, I'm just going to phrase all this in the context of a heterosexual man watching women, you know, or being, enjoying women. Once you've seen an attractive woman actually moving around and responding to things, and then you actually see the real humanity of sexuality. Yeah, a static porn, like, oh, look, just a picture of porn. No, that doesn't do it for me. I don't think she, you know, maybe, maybe that's a look of pain on her face. No, maybe, you know, I want to see the context around it. Oh, then you have erectile dysfunction. You can't be aroused by static porn. That's his point too, though. Point three is decreased penile sensitivity. Your penis is not as sensitive. And he says that indicates that your brain is actually less sensitive. Okay, so let's pretend for a minute that we're actually trying to solve this problem. Let's compare the decreased sensitivity when you watch porn. Let's compare that to the decreased sensitivity when boys' genitalia are mutilated at birth for no reason more so. Other reasons, supposedly, but one of the reasons they're mutilated, um, circumcision, is to decrease their sensitivity so they're more sexually self-controlled. So if we really care about decreased sensitivity, instead of starting out with, you know what you should give up is all this porn. Uh, let's just not mutilate kids' penises for the sake of making them insensitive. Let's not, um, other ways that we create insensitive men that are mentally insensitive and it ends up with penile insensitivity. Let's not relegate men as non-women and children. You know, we have women and children, the people that matter, and then men. Him accepting that and being around that, that makes you eventually insensitive. Once you kind of accept like, okay, I was really offended at that or really sad at that, but now I'm just used to the idea of men, women, and children using terms, women and children, innocent women and children were harmed and 700 men. And then even worse, you, you teach men to, that romance and comedy can easily involve men being routinely humor, humiliated, even romantic comedies. It's like, oh, you know that romantic comedy where the guy gets kicked in the balls trying to cross the street to talk to the woman and she looks back and laughs and then he gets hit by a car. You know, romance and comedy. Do it all you want. But I'm just saying that creates insensitive men. You want to be insensitive towards men, you're going to get insensitive men. The, the missing link people are looking for to be able to keep treating men terribly and yet somehow have men that don't act terribly and treat people terribly, the missing link is how can we be entirely insensitive to men, completely devalue them, and then not have them end up as people who are insensitive and devalue others? This is the kind of thing you'll hear. How could he look into her eyes and rape her? How could he see her humanity and take it from her? Well, let me guess. Um, because all of his life, people looked into his eyes and devalued his humanity. Now you're blaming... Blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, your culture creates the rapists. We don't go by my rules. We don't go by the rules of don't be insensitive to men and you won't have insensitive men. Or it'll be far less commonplace. In a culture that actually raised men as human beings and not human doings, what can you do? What can you get done? Women are human beings. So you mean men should have value besides what they can bring to us? No, no, no do whatever you want. Relegate men as human doings, be insensitive towards them. But meanwhile, if you don't have that, then you would be justified in saying, how could a man raised with self-respect raised with kindness and sensitivity, look into a woman's eyes or a man's eyes and rape them? That'd be a good question in a culture where it's not totally obvious. Well, he could do that in our culture because he's entirely insensitive. Well, how did he get this way? Well, biology teaches us some elaborate thing over here. No, he's been treated with insensitivity. That's how it happened. So number three is decreased penile sensitivity. And we know how decreased penile sensitivity happens overexposure to to um, the elements from being circumcised and again the insensitivity is mental the person Gary Wilson acknowledges and men have mental insensitivity long before they're exposed to internet porn 
Number four, delayed ejaculation. This is where it gets really good. And the inability to have an orgasm. Of course, we know that orgasms aren't what matters in sex if you're, unless you're sexually retarded. Women have known that for a long time. Some of them grudgingly accept it. They're like, well, just because he can't get me off rather than her knowing her own body. I mean, the point kind of is, you know, sour grapes, like, oh, those grapes are sour. Like, you know, the point is orgasm, but I'm going to pretend it's not because then, you know, I'm about connecting with someone. That's what women are about. Then as soon as women learn how to orgasm, like, whoa, then they chase it just like men. Well, the point is orgasm. So the other idea and an inability of or to orgasm is erectile dysfunction. That is clinical. Meanwhile, orgasm is not the point except to sexually retarded people. But then you got delayed ejaculation. So we compare this to the kind of messages men receive, which is songs about I'm going to love you all night long and boy, give it to me all night long. That kind of stuff like, oh man, a real man can just what? Fuck her for hours and hours and hours. That's delayed ejaculation. Well, no, but it's like, no, it's like delayed when I don't want it delayed. Because you know, again, let's think of these as problems in the context of women saying their problems. Because men are not going to, of their own accord, come and be like, I have this problem. I can't get it up when I want to. No, it's he can't get it up when he thinks he's supposed to. I know I'm supposed to be attracted to this woman. He can't get it up when she wants him to. What kind of a man can't get an erection with me? So in all that context, that's why delayed ejaculation is a bad thing. If you're delaying ejaculation amongst the Jenna Hayes, Jenna Jameson, and all the other porn stars you've ever seen, and because you, you want to be able to give it to them all, oh, delay that ejaculate because you really want to plow each of them. But no, it's, okay, so you're having awkward, crappy sex with the lights off, and your wife is complaining that it's taking so long because she's frigid, and she can't enjoy sex because your dick's not 12 inches, and you don't know how to... to um, to give foreplay or anything like that. So she just wants you to get it over with and you just can't because all the pressure's on you to end this boring sexual experience. End it like a man, you know, coming. So there's the delayed ejaculation for you. Only in the context of sexually retarded people would we even talk about that. Uh, and here's the interesting thing that the Gary Wilson mentions in the context of delayed ejaculation. Um, the, first, we men are the women's tireless sex bots. You know, they're supposed to be able to give it to her as much as she wants. But now he says that men are, in fact, faking orgasms with their partners. Then he pauses and says, that's very interesting. But nevertheless, I wrote it down. Nevertheless, let's show no interest and move on. He just moves on. That's a very interesting. Men are faking orgasms. Let's not analyze that at all. I'll analyze it. Meanwhile, women traditionally fake an orgasm most often spelled right most often in order to not endure protest when she does not want to prolong a worthless sexual encounter meaning she's going to fake an orgasm that way if she doesn't just stop and say like oh I'm done if you are well no baby I want you to enjoy you know, all this kind of like I want to be a real man and, and make you enjoy sex I want to make you come she doesn't want to have to endure it. Like, it's bad enough sex. I don't want to have to have some dialogue about reassuring you that you're a real man even if I don't come. Even though I really don't think you're a real man if I don't come. But I don't want to have to even deal with it. It just adds insult to insult. The fact you can't get me off then I have to encourage you that no, it's okay. So she just fakes the orgasm. Meanwhile, men are doing this according to him. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Maybe they're not real men. You're not a real man. Maybe they're just, uh, let's, no, it's just interesting. Let's move on. How about let's analyze that because that's pretty important. Men are faking orgasms? What's the point? All men care about are orgasms. That's the point. Why would he fake the only thing he cares about? The only thing, reason he's with her is her sex. He doesn't value her as a person. So why would he fake the only prize she can give him? Well, again, because the men aren't the disgusting caricatures that self-righteous man-hating people, including men, would have you believe. Instead, he doesn't want her to nag at him to come. And women will. If you, if she has come to accept that the, the culmination of sex, the, the, the point, is the man coming, then she's not going to want you to not come because then she's a failure for being the penis receptacle she should be. And plenty of women think like that. Plenty of men, men think like that, of course. The, the sex... 
the point of the sex is for me to come. The woman's thinking, well, I know that, you know, guys can't make me come or, you know, or, you know if I don't come, it's okay. All this second class citizen stuff. That's a different video to discuss that. But plenty, many women have accepted that the point of sex is to come. So she can make him come like anything. You know, she's raised with this whole notion that like, man, my, my sexuality is boundless and I can, you know, I can satisfy a man. So when she can't satisfy the man or so she sees it, like he's not coming, then she, wh why not? You don't think I'm pretty? I don't know, all this kind of stuff. So that would be a very reasonable hypothesis as to why men would fake an orgasm. Nevertheless, this person, let's move on. What does he move on to? He starts talking about neuroscience and how you, you have to know neuroscience and able to be able to solve this problem. It's garbage. We'll get to that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, there we are. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, here we are. Uh, copulatory impotence. Fancy. The inability to maintain an erection with a real-life sexual partner. Again, if you have an inability to maintain an erection with whatever your fetish is, the, the sexy this kind of woman, the sexy that kind of woman, whatever. Again, speaking in the context of heterosexual men wanting women and wanting attractive young women. Oh, what kind of a man doesn't want nice, aged, experienced women? You know, right? So if you have copulatory impotence with your ideal, okay, I would say that's, you know, that's a problem. That's a, yeah, that's clinical. Nevertheless, keep in mind, most men are not fucking their ideal. They're fucking the person they could afford as a wife or girlfriend, whatever, the person they could afford. Oh, that's not nice. Therefore, it's somehow not accurate. Meanwhile, these men are fucking the best case scenario for what they can afford. And in case you're just joining us, we have a lot of poverty, even in the United States. And men don't have the quality of woman that they want. Men are raised to have pretty bad standards for what constitutes a what constitutes a quality woman, broken chair. But nevertheless, when he has, what is it, copulatory impotence, can't maintain an erection with a sexual partner that he regrets getting with, that doesn't fulfill his needs, that doesn't do the one thing he signed her on for. He didn't sign her on so she could fix his car or tutor him in math or help him carry the furniture. No, it's like, okay, you're a series of moist and not so moist holes Please maintain your sexual mystery and magic over me so that I will you know, be able to be numbed and desensitized to the disappointing job I've chosen. No, I can't. Now I'm not sexually exciting. So all of a sudden, oh, well then it's my fault. I have copulatory impotence. It's not your fault for you know, not being sexually desirable, all this stuff. It's much more complicated than just to blame the woman for not being sexually desirable. But nevertheless, the idea that copulatory impotence that makes you think that this person is having sex with who they want to have sex with and they can't keep it up. I'll break for a little bit. A lot of these things sound like digression, but I'm actually trying to stay to a certain path. But I will say, imagine, for example, this guy... Uh, talked about earlier, or maybe it's going to be later, talked about variety, yeah, it's later, variety and, um, and novelty, something new and exciting, and variety, it's like, once men start to expect variety and novelty, then the thing they come home to that gives them neither variety nor novelty than even self-respect, it's just not as satisfying. So imagine, the man who's like, okay, awkward, crappy woman who you know, that he's married to. She looks her best when she shines and fakes everything. And then I have to, and that's when we go out. So other people see her at her best. I get to come home and as soon as she's away from the people that matter to her, the, the, the culture, everyone except for me, then I, and then, then she really just lets loose and like, okay, let me be who I really am. And so all of a sudden I have to see her at her worst and she respects everyone else more. So she shows herself at her best and I get to come home to that soul stripping, reality. Yeah, he has copulatory impotence, can't keep it up with that disappointment. But he wouldn't have uh, copulatory impotence with his neighbor's wife, who he gets to see at her best. So again, we're just, we're pretending not, 
see, the thing is, I'm not even advocating some of the stuff that I'm talking about. I'm saying that this is what's going on in the mind of these people that supposedly have copulatory impotence and people just want to pretend not to notice. Did he have copulatory impotence when he saw your sister, who's hotter than you, uh, taking a shower? No, he got a spontaneous erection. I can't believe it. His, his erectile dysfunction has, has failed. Yet we want to just pretend, heads in the sands like ostrich, that, no, we understand. It's, uh, it's heavy porn use. It's this, that, or the other thing. No. Meanwhile, before I get to this next point, I do want to say, I don't consider women at their best when they're shiny and all this. I, I think it's ridiculous to say you're improved when you meticulously hide everything out of self-disgust and a fear of not being accepted for who you are. To me, that's not attractive. So I'm not speaking from experience when I say, like if I was with a woman and she shows her actual self to me and then she gets shined up and stupid for everyone else, the only way I would tolerate that is if she's really trying to the only way it would be even tolerable is if she's just trying to, you know, because as a woman, you just have to fake it to make it. You can't just show up. This is me. Accept me. They're like, well, no, thanks. We're going to go with the woman who who falsifies and creates an illusion. If she's doing it in that context and she's really, this is a bunch of nonsense, but I'll, I'll play along for, the, for a greater cause. I can tolerate that. I still don't prefer it. I prefer a woman that's militant and says, you know what, fuck you. I'm a person. Fire me for not having shaved legs. And I'll sue you. One of the few good things that came out of feminism is you can't do that kind of nonsense. Expect a woman to shine and stupefy herself. It's sometimes hard to prove. That's why you fire them. That's the kind of woman I like. Militant women who don't accept that stuff. But nevertheless, in the context of a man, that's the thing he likes. It's like, oh, I wish she would be beautiful for me. And then she goes and is beautiful for everyone else. And at her best because their opinions are what really matter to her. That's soul stripping as hell for men. You strip a man's soul. Yeah, he's not going to have an erection for you if he has any other options, and that's what porn offers him. Uh, coincidentally, one more aside, then get to the next point. Plenty of people in Islam pat themselves on the back, and are patted on the back by some, because in Islam, in the minds of some, the woman is not supposed to do that, get beautiful for everyone else. That's the whole point of you know wrapping up and everything, is you keep yourself for your husband. Then when you're actually home... Then you put on the makeup and look beautiful for, you know, beautiful for your husband. Now imagine if we accept, which I don't, that makeup makes you more beautiful and da 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 da. That's a lot more respectable. Oh, you're my one and only, like I'm going to work a job I hate to provide you with shit you don't need. And you're going out and, and being at your best for everyone else. And then you come home to me and I'm like, oh, let me let loose, uh, take off the corset. Blech. Not very respectable, but the idea that, oh, you know, I'm going to save myself and then you know, show my magic and, and my charms only for you more respectable. But again, they're both disgusting to me. I don't respect the idea of, no, you're my ornament. Only be pretty around me. Only you know, get real sexy. It's garbage to me, but nevertheless, the idea that you save it for the person you actually care about is a lot more respectable than you save it for everyone else and then make him endure with you know, behind the scenes. One of the reasons why people don't understand how someone could ever dump a Christina Aguilera or Kim Kardashian or any of these women who are a four on a scale of one to ten compared to how they're perceived. You don't get to see them everything off. You see them exactly how they want you to see. Photoshop pictures, tons of science into how to fake their appearance so they seem more like what you want. Then you get home with them and they're every bit as tedious as you've ever seen them. But you're like, man, she's tedious, but boy, she's pretty. Now imagine having all that stripped away and all you have is the tedious person. That would get old really quick. Don't go thinking you want that kind of person to come home to. So, uh, uh, more on the copulatory impotence to not being able to keep up an erection. Here's another interesting um thing that's been increasingly popular, uh, the idea of fat, lazy women. I don't like exceedingly thin women. Nevertheless, the idea of being fat and lazy will lead to copulatory impotence and inability to maintain an erection. Why would that be? Remember how you, after you run a mile or you run something, you know, some exercise back in school when you exercised, you weren't supposed to just stop. You're supposed to keep walking, keep walking, or you'll pass out because all the blood is coming out and you have to keep moving so the blood will come back to your heart. If you run a bunch and then just stop, you'll pass out. Likewise, after you eat, you're supposed to wait 15, 20 minutes before you go swimming. Remember these things? It has to do with blood. You only have so much blood pumping out, so much blood pumping in. If you're running, 
your body's using the blood for running, it can't use, it will rush out and not have enough blood for your head, that's why you pass out. If you're eating, all the blood comes to your stomach and it's using it for digestion, so if you try to swim, you're gonna get um, cramps because all the blood is already busy. So, who gets copulatory impotence? Is it the strong guy who exercises regularly and is fucking the petite chick in the porno? And he doesn't have to exert all this energy and put the blood and, and he no, he's just she's light and he can just do her. Is it that person who gets the erectile dysfunction, the copulatory impotence, or is it the man who's with the woman who now everyone's telling her, no, big is sexy, this, that, and the other thing. So then he has to lug her around because of course the bigger they get, the lazier they are. It's like, you know, just you move me. I, I can't move myself. If it doesn't apply to you, I'm not talking about you. I'm gonna get some big woman who's like, I move around. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about fat, lazy women who don't, in, in, just lazy in general, not even fat necessarily, lazy women who aren't involved sexually. So the man has to do all this work and then he gets tired and so doesn't have enough blood to maintain an erection. It's really that simple. And you think that makes too much sense. It must need a pill or something. It's really that simple. But instead of figuring that out and saying, wow, women should get better at riding. So he, you know, riding the dick, being on top so that he won't have to constantly be the person doing the work. Or uh, women, when he gets, a, uh, uh, when his erection goes down, oh, then, you know, take a break, massage his arms, relax him while you're sucking his dick to, to maintain the mood. Well, no, no, no. Instead, we'll just say a real man can manipulate this fat chick or this just lazy chick. He can manipulate her and he's strong enough to do that and maintain an erection. A real man has enough blood flow for that. Okay. Again, he's the human doing. He's the sex bot that's not supposed to have any preferences, any priorities. No, you can be as fat as you want. No, you don't have to move. Oh, no, it's my fault if my erection goes down. No, you're real sexy and classy. No, you look just as good with your makeup off, even though I'm taught that you look disgusting normal, and you're taught you look disgusting normal. So you have this look on your face anytime I see you in your normal environment, and you apologize if I can feel any hair on your legs. Yeah, that's real sexy to just be disgusted at who you are. But a real man can just take in all of this mental conflict, all, all, all this stuff that just, you know, all this shame and disgust and deceit that swirls around sex in our culture and be rock hard because it's like, wow, I finally got this chick who, when I was at the club, looked a lot better in low light and with everything wrapped together so that you couldn't see what she looks like. Oh, let's it all out. Uh, take a look at I'm going to get you sucker where she has the wig and the false leg and everything. And I'm supposed to still just be, you know, real man would still be attracted to me, no matter how much he has to lug me around, no matter how just loose and lazy I am. Okay. Again, we can call that erectile dysfunction. And we can say the reason why men can't, you know, still maintain it is because, oh, now, he's, now he has pornography. Now he sees examples of people having satisfying sex with somebody who actually, you know, again, heterosexual with a woman with a woman that's actually doing her part, even more than her part, sometimes all of it. You know, she's actually engaging and she enjoys sex and she doesn't have that look on her face like, is someone coming in? Can, can we turn the lights off? Uh, where, uh, hold a sheet up, you know, all that awkwardness. Once he has another option, he sees like, wow, sex can be this way. Suddenly he just can't get it up, no matter what, no matter how dissatisfied he is. Which, and probably it'll come up more later, but which is, um, Amateur porn really drives this home because it's one thing to see like really good lighting, really good makeup on some famous porn star and like, oh yeah, she knows how to suck a dick, but she's inaccessible. That's why the girl next door look and the amateur look, somebody's like, this is just a random girl and she works it better than these porn stars, which is plenty times the case. What that does to a man is think, no, I don't have to like hold out and hope I end up with the Jennas of the world, Jenna Jameson, Jenna Hayes. Again, those aren't even my favorites um, at all, but those are well known. Like, I kind of have to hold out for them. Random girl you know, can be way more sexual than even the porn stars, but certainly more than this awkward, crappy person that I invested a lifetime into hoping that, okay, I hope this pays off and she does the one thing that she can contribute. Nope, she's not. Instead, she watches daytime television. Instead, she's telling me I have copulatory impotence and erectile dysfunction. Somebody, uh, she saw it on Dr. Phil that it's my fault. I can't get it up with her. 
It's not her fault at all. How dare you blame a woman for anything, even for the one thing she's supposed to be good at, creating an erection in a man, and it doesn't happen, suddenly it's his fault. You're watching porn, aren't you? You, 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 you looked at that other option, the option of being sexually satisfied. Well, yeah, of course you're not going to get it up with me if you realize that you could be satisfied sexually. You're not supposed to look at that. You're supposed to be sexually deprived so that even when I just brush against you, you're like, oh my gosh, some sexual contact. Keep in mind, that's why we uh, don't encourage men to be emotional with each other, hugging each other the way girls are. Oh, we just hug each other. We just hold hands when we walk. No, we just get goofy at parties and go down on each other. Watch what happens. You think pornography causes erectile dysfunction when men can't get it up with crappy women. Imagine if men could be as sexually comfortable with other men as we're teaching our girls. No, just be comfortable with other girls. Just kiss, you know, it's okay, and all this kind of stuff. All in the context, not because guys like lesbians. No, it's because if she's comfortable and lets off steam sexually with women, she's less likely to get pregnant. It's all about population control. Nevertheless, when the whole zeitgeist misses the point of population control and where it's just, no, seriously, just enjoy yourself. When men start really being able to comfortably enjoy themselves with other men, what will a woman have to offer? I usually tell it like this to, to people, this is a common talking point of mine. Imagine you're in a bar and the worthless girl who was taking dance and, and pottery classes while you were taking engineering classes. She doesn't have money now. Hey, and you do. And she comes up, she's like, hey, how's it going? I'm 10 years past my prime. She doesn't say that, but it reeks of her. Hey, how about you buy me a drink? You're like, oh, no thanks. Um, actually, I was bought a drink by this guy. What? what? Well, yeah, but like, he can't do for you what I can't. Well, yeah, he can. Well, no, I'm talking sexual. Yeah, me too. What are you, a fag? Yeah. Or, no, I just, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting your dicks up by a guy. Just like, you know, remember how back in college when I was studying and you weren't and you would goof off at parties and go down on chicks because it was just silly or funny or to get guys' attention or because girls enjoy oral sex. Remember that? Yeah, of course. You know, now I'm over here as the bar whore that can't even afford her own drinks. Yeah, well now, I strategically... Don't have any hang-ups, shame, or guilt about, you know, just getting my dick sucked. It helps me avoid having to waste money on people like you. Girls 10 years past their prime. Imagine that. Even compare that to internet porn. Internet porn is not the ultimate um, Pandora's box of now men aren't going to appreciate women because they can see better women. And so they actually expect their women to, in, to make them feel fulfilled sexually. That's not the ultimate Pandora's box. The ultimate Pandora's box is men being comfortable enough with their own sexuality to just say, okay, genitalia shape aside, holes versus poles, who treats me with more respect? Who's willing to understand my body? And they say you can't choose homosexuality or homosexual acts. Uh, I'm not going to get too much more into it. I'm going to go to the next point. But keep in mind, this flips for the other way for women too. The idea you can't choose homosexuality it's it's a gene well okay then what about all these worthless men who are not worth you know imagine you're a woman oh, I'll be the woman I'm a woman and I've been taught you know I'm gonna find this guy and he'll live happily I'll he'll live happily ever after because he's gonna provide everything for me I don't need to be good at anything and these men never measure up so eventually I have to settle for some man who not only doesn't measure up and isn't gonna provide me and we live happily ever after but he's disrespectful, he's sexually retarded, his genitals are mutilated so he doesn't have a sense of sexual self, uh, he is not faithful, he's always looking for, for something better than me, trying to capitalize and get the better person, and doesn't respect me whatsoever. But nevertheless, I have this gene that tells me I'm heterosexual, so I'm going to tolerate all this disrespect. You can choose homosexuality, by the way. And just like, you know what, I'm a woman, and she's a woman, but I don't care, because... She actually is interested in me as a person. The only people who can choose homosexuality, by the way, are those who transcend the idea that, oh man, what matters is the shape of the genitals, not how the person treats you. If you can actually put sex in its place and be in control of your sexuality rather than let it control you. Well, you know, I'm just helplessly, why do women like bad boys? They don't. We just have a culture of homophobia that doesn't allow women to say, you know, the women, you know, porn is an option, of course. And for men, 
other men are an option. But no, you can't go with porn. What kind of loser wants porn? What kind of loser wants to be a gay guy? We tell women the same thing. Why are women attracted to bad boys? Because good boys are weak-minded cowards who give her whatever she wants, so she eventually spirals into destruction. So she knows that. She wants a guy that expects something of her. Because bad boys help keep her safe and, and defend against other bad boys and other good boys, people who would want to exploit her. But girls don't want bad boys. More and more you're going to see women retiring from the cultural race of, oh, you try to get yourself a good man. They're going to retire. Plenty of women do. They, they um, get a man and get his inheritance, uh, get an old man, he dies, and in a Cole Smith style. Or just get something, get financially secure however you can. And plenty of women have just been taught in this terrible culture, you know, the best way is, is through a man rather than through hard work. They're going to do whatever they can and then just retire with another woman because then they can just be comfortable, explore sex, and not have all these hang-ups about, well, if I don't do this, I'm not a real woman. If I don't do this, I'm not a real woman. If I'm not with this kind of a guy who's this good at something or this rich, I'm not a real woman because I should be able to command the, the sensibilities of a better man. You can recognize that and you should recognize it also for men. Men more and more are going to retire from this rat race of sexual retardation where it's like, look, no matter how abusive women become, no matter how much they want to go and watch romantic comedies where men are routinely humiliated and hurt, but still there's just something about her, like Billy Joel's garbage ass song. She hurts me and she destroys me, but she's always a woman to me. Blame it all on yourself. Wow, what a terrible song. Blame it on yourself that she's terrible, disgusting. But there's something about it. I mean, after all, why, why do men you know, keep going back to the women? Well, for the same reason women go back to the men. They don't, they're not shown any other option. As soon as they have other options, whoa, there's another option? Attractive young women who are respectful towards you? Wow, okay, I'll go for that. But you're going to leave this woman high and dry? You left her. You know, that more and more people are going to hear that. Like, you left her in this context. She had cancer or she had your kid, this and that. Yeah, because she was tedious and disrespectful. I didn't leave her because she had cancer, but as soon as she had cancer, she was treating with so much disrespect because she was taught just to pity herself. And so I'm left with not only a woman that has cancer, but has no respect for me. Yeah, I left her when she had my kid because as soon as that happened, she started getting really domineering and saying, like, a real man does this, a real man does that. So I didn't leave her because she had a kid, but because she started acting crazy disrespectful. We're going to start seeing this. People are going to start being able to articulate it. For now, the culture and the most obedient men and women have people in a mental headlock where they can't really say these things clearly. Nevertheless, eventually, men and women are going to have real options and not have to settle for emotional abuse. So, number six is ED, erectile dysfunction drugs, are losing their effect. And he says, why? Because the problem is in the brain, not the penis. But again, we know that you're just masking a symptom with these erection drugs. It's like, oh, you can't get it up? Let's give you this drug. Oh, it's not working? Let's give you more of this drug. Because it's just masking the symptom. This tedious person you're not attracted to, but impossible you get an erection now. You're a real man. And then eventually, even the drugs aren't enough. We can compare this. I mentioned comparing this to this culture where it teaches mothers to teach their kids to scapegoat the father. Your father was never there. Oh, Papa was a rolling stone and all this. Then eventually the mother scapegoats the kids through the bad culture with antipsychotic drugs because she can't control the kid. And then where do we have? And then it necessarily ignores the problem. The problem is we have a corrupt culture that endlessly absolves where am I? I just wrote this thing like, right before I started. Endlessly absolves, encourages, and rewards proudly incompetent, profoundly hypocritical mothers. One more time. The problem is not the father left. Or the problem is not the kid just won't listen. Put them on antipsychotic drugs. What we will eventually find more and more in why ED drugs lose their effect. The, the idea is we're just masking symptoms. We have a culture a corrupt culture that endlessly absolves, encourages, and rewards proudly incompetent, she's not good at anything, and profoundly hypocritical mothers, and women in general. But my point is not just to scapegoat the women and say, oh, we fixed that, we'll fix it. The point is that's what's encouraged. So if you're a decent woman, 
you're going to have to compete with all these profoundly incompetent, hypocritical women. Those are the ones being encouraged and rewarded. So women are not, definitely not. When I say things like this here that I just read, people are thinking that, oh, I think women have it so good. We allow them to be endlessly um, incompetent and hypocritical. That's not good at all. Women are treated terribly in this culture when they're allowed to be these worthless people, scapegoat their child's father, create the, the make the child dislike the father, then eventually the child dislikes the mother because she's a hypocrite. They put the kid on antipsychotic drugs once the child can't respect the mother. So then she has a, a man that she has alienated, a child that she has completely retarded, socially retarded, forced him onto drugs. This woman is treated well in our culture, then eventually she develops an emotional disorder. Hey, what do you know? It's called disillusion. It's called being set up for failure by our culture. Nevertheless, impossibly, the, the goal is, well, if we keep men having erections despite their better judgment, then we don't have to change anything about women, how they are increasingly not worthy of an erection not worthy of their children's respect. No, no, we'll just give them erectile dysfunction medicine for the, she can't get the man up because she's just sexually tedious, boring, or otherwise useless. And we'll just give the child drugs because she he's not listening, or he or she is not listening to the mother. Yeah, dope away. Number seven, uh, almost done. Number seven, almost done and at one hour. Number seven is that if erectile dysfunction uh, maintains or, or, or shows up even with extreme porn use. And this is what the guy said about it. He said, uh, eventually you can't get it up even with extreme porn use. So get it up. What? Your dick, of course. The thing that matters. The point of sex. You can't have sex without an erect penis. Yeah, well, lesbians do it plenty. And uh, r really everyone does it because I guess I should say what I mean and not what I don't mean. No, you don't need an erect penis to have sex. Lesbians can have sex, for example. Men without erections can have sex. Men who have been castrated in order to provide better singers for the Catholic Church, which happened, um, could have sex. Sexuality is not the entering of a vagina by a penis. So, can't get it up, even with extreme porn use? What is extreme? And again, we're just talking not about erectile dysfunction. We're talking about a failed human doing. He's not a human being. It doesn't matter why he can't get up. You can't get it up, even with this extreme porn use. You are a failure as a human doing. You should, you know, as the person at the beginning said, you know you should get an erection around a woman, but you just can't. Yeah, you're a failed human doing. You can't get it up. Again, this kind of tacky language that um, the author is Gary Wilson uses, can't get it up. Well, no, no, it's like, you know, can't get it up. Yeah, I'm no, it's not silly or just relaxed or lighthearted. It's a part of the problem. The idea that even our medical professionals who later in a minute, he's going to be talking about neuroscience. Yet he says, can't get it up. This kind of lazy language when we already, he already established it's the mind, not the dick. But then all of a sudden it's can't get it up. Moving on though. So the last section that he brings up is porn and erectile dysfunction, why there is so little information. The first point is fast and free internet porn is a relatively new phenomenon. And what he says is guys who began watching porn at 12 are coming down with impotence by 15, 16 and 17. So define impotence. So far, I, I have written here, so far, impotence seems to be defined as our culture's human doings, not human beings, the men, our culture's human doings being increasingly unable to be substantive, substantively attracted, meaning meaningfully attracted, meaning an erection, substantively attracted by our culture's entirely tedious, thoroughly unlikable, sexually retarded women. One more time. Impotence, the inability to be attracted, get an erection, is more and more being defined simply as our culture's human doings being increasingly unable to, to be substantively attracted by, like, oh, I'm just attracted. You, you are, it works. 
the thing you do works, the tedious way you are, that attracts me. More and more, I can't be attracted by, what do we have? Entirely tedious, thoroughly unlikable, except to a sexually retarded man, thoroughly unlikable, sexually retarded women. No one could reasonably argue that so many of our women are sexually retarded, confused and stupefied. It's useful to have sexually retarded women. But also, thoroughly unlikable? I don't think so. Women are so likable. Well, increasingly, you're going to come around reality. These, these academics can only sit around and pretend for so long before people just say, like, prima facie, on its face, that doesn't make sense. When you say, no, women are still likable, more and more women are saying, I don't have many women friends because they're tedious, because they're bitches, because they're not friendly, because they're petty. So when it was men saying it, it's just, oh, you're just misogynist, blah, blah, blah. Now women say it. Women can't tolerate women. And, it, and none of them, it's because men or women, it's not because they're women. If we raised men to be as entirely tedious, unlikable, and sexually retarded, sexually retarded we do, but if we raised men to be as unlikable and tedious as women, then people would be saying, you know, most of my friends are women because guys are just tedious and unlikable. We can keep putting our heads in the sand, keep praising women no matter how worthless they get objectively, but eventually, women are going to be the ones saying it. How are you going to call a woman a misogynist? They try. They try, oh, she's just self-loathing, this and that. No. Any of us that don't like disgusting women, that provides us more space to like women that are worth liking. People who are worth liking, but say, oh, women. Oh, no, I like these women. These women acting crazy and stupid, ridiculous. I, I don't like that kind of behavior. I find that tedious, unlikable. Oh, you hate women. No, I like these women over here. They're not tedious and unlikable. But you just said that women are tedious and unlikable. Well, yes, if I meant every single woman, I would just say, well, I give up. Women are tedious and unlikable. There's no reason to even mention it if it is part of their anatomy and it's just, you know, women have to be that way. But instead you say, you know those tedious, unlikable traits that you meticulously follow after the culture allows you? Yeah, I don't like you for that. <gasps> you hate women. Okay, change your attitude and let's see if I hate women. Well, no, but connected to my attitude is necessarily this tediousness. Eh, no, don't hate women. Hate tedious people. Women don't hate women. They hate tedious women. So this guy talks about impotence um, in 16, 17, and 18-year-olds. They're impotent. So how do we define impotence? You know, more and more, it's just not liking these sexually retarded, tedious women. And I mentioned several times, you can feel free to shoot the messenger for all these things that I'm saying. But the message is bulletproof. And the message is that after one conversation with Gary Wilson, these 15, 16, and 17 year olds, yeah, they'll feel like they have a disease now. Like, oh, Gary Wilson, the anatomy and physiology teacher. Oh, this doctor says you have erectile dysfunction. Oh, this is very common. You have erectile dysfunction. You have impotence. And so, therefore, such and such. Yeah, you can psychologically abuse teenagers into buying into that. One conversation with me. I have it written, so I'll just read it. One conversation with me, and they will know that the guy should not be apologizing for opening up the real Pandora's box. It's not women's allure and insatiability. Like, ooh, women, oh, they're so sexually, they can't be satisfied. That's the Pandora's box. She's so sexual. No, the real Pandora's box is a man's ability to expect satisfying sex. That's the Pandora's box for this culture. Men have to be sexually retarded or else you couldn't sell them these polished turds that you call women. And plenty of women aren't so polished turds. I'm talking about what I'm talking about, not what I'm not talking about. Uh, two, looks like four more points. Two, um, another reason why there's so little information about the connection between erectile dysfunction and porn is it may take years to develop serious erectile dysfunction. And this is where he first uses the term users users of porn you know it's like it's like a it's like a crack user they use porn okay users time frames are highly variable meaning like you might not de develop it. it it varies very much on when like some people get it as in their teens some people it takes a long time to develop what i add on to this is it requires to develop this erectile dysfunction it requires a whole lot of subjective shaming of men to convince him that he is at fault because she is sexually boring or tedious, etc. If the man is like, oh, me? Oh, no, ever since 12, I've been seeing depictions of satisfying sex. So I know this is not that. So I have erectile dysfunction. 
but I don't take blame for it. She should be less sexually boring. She should know her body better. Oh, culture taught her to be sexually retarded? Well, I pity her, but I cannot be her sexual guru. That is for herself to be sexually... Some things you need to do for yourself. But no, he's not going to develop ED, erectile dysfunction, of his own accord. This is a social disease. Not meaning it comes as a result of society, but you have to buy into society to even have it. Otherwise, you wouldn't even for a second have somebody waddle up and say, Hey, you know what? You know why you can't get it up with that lady? You have a disease. Like, no, she just doesn't know how to suck my dick. And I've seen it done. I know it can be done. Or, no, she's just lazy sexually, so I run out of energy. Oh, then you should be a real man. You have erectile dysfunction and you should be a real man. Well, no, no, no. I was a real man with my lax girlfriend. She, she involved me. She was involved and, you know, I never had erectile dysfunction. So, uh, where are we? Um, number three, men don't talk to each other about it. This is another reason why erectile dysfunction information is not as available in healthcare. Men don't talk to uh, each other about it. And then this is what Gary Wilson says. No guy wants to admit he has erectile dysfunction. Okay. Compare this to me willingly admitting that I have had erectile dysfunction in the past with crappy partners. Let me read on. Um, oh, actually, that's the little keyword that reminded me so I can go off on that. There's more, but... Yes, I have had erectile dysfunction in the past and not been able to get it up and not being able to come and etc. But meanwhile, what else have I also had? And this is me. I'm talking about me. And I'm not about to brag, but I'm because I don't consider um, being sexually in tune in a culture of sexual retards. I don't take that as like, wow, look at me. I'm good. No, you all are a mess. I should be the baseline. Nevertheless, I have had bad experiences where I couldn't get it up, etc. And I've had plenty of women say the same thing. You're like a sexual god, or you're like the king of sex. Now, that sounds, you know, maybe you think that's funny, or maybe, wow, really? Whoa, this guy must be good. Again, we're talking about usually sexually retar sexual retards, although not always. We'll get more on that. But compare this to um, the use of king and god, and just like, whoa, amazing. I do massage therapy. And one of the things that women would consistently say when I'd give them a massage is, I love you, or I want to marry you, or can I keep you? Every time they said any of those, they were just joking, just kind of saying in the context of me giving a massage, I might have met them, you know, the same day or something, a classmate or something. But they say those things, so there's actually a connection to where, like, well, they kind of mean it, because I consistently got that response. It's like, no, seriously, I wish I could keep you. Likewise for the sex. When the bar is so low, yeah, I spring over that bar. I'm actually good at sex in general, like objectively, but among sexual retards, I have consistently been told, dude, you're a sexual god, you're a sexual this and that. The end of the story is actually once I release them from, you know, I meticulously teach them not to be wowed at me, but just develop their own sexual frame of reference and I won't stand out. Can you imagine someone doing that, you know, setting themselves up for failure of wrapping this? You know, you know, I am a sexual god. Yeah, you should you know, get under my wing. All of you under my wing. No, I tell them. I say, I'm not interested in having a sexual protege or a, um, I almost said a, a, a sexual uh, apprentice. But I actually am interested in apprenticing people. But you send them off afterwards. Like now, go not, not like say, now I'm done with you and toss them. But eventually they're like, whoa, I found this other guy. He's better for me. I found this... And then I don't go, like, oh, how dare you? They wander off. It has been disheartening and startling even at some points in my life, but I raise them up and send them on their way. Again, my point is not to brag, because I don't consider sexual, being sexually dynamic as something to brag about. I think everyone should have that, and they should help others to get it. The reason I mention it is because in the same span of time, in these same, I'm 33, and in the same I'll say from about 19 is when I started being badass sexually for various reasons. In that time, I have plenty of women telling me you're a sexual god, you're a sexual king, or telling other people I'm a sexual god and king. In the same span of time, I've had plenty of women talk about how crappy I am. Talk about how, oh man, he, he couldn't even get it up, or oh man, he did this, or oh, he came too fast, or didn't come fast enough, da 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 da, da. Erectile dysfunction. 
Meanwhile, if it were useful, I would take responsibility and say like, oh yeah, that day I was really tired. Or, oh yeah, you know, I had this problem or I was watching too much porn. No, I know all of my sexual experiences and any time they've been these kind of things and often they have been, not, not often, but enough times they have been to be substantial or significant in my mind. I blame the mentality of the partner and the whole atmosphere that they accept. I mean, for example, I've been with women who don't like to receive oral sex. You can have your preferences, but if you don't like to receive oral sex, there's a reason for that. You didn't just wake up and then grow to be whatever age you were when I fucked you and, and say like, I, I don't like it. You know, I just don't like it. I don't No, you're disgusted with your body. So right away, you're not going to have a good time. Any of these hangups, people can have their preferences, but when it's an outright hangup, I don't take responsibility for that. And so any man that's been, that has erectile dysfunction, they learn to take responsibility for things. It's just not useful for them to take responsibility for. It's not effective. It won't solve the problem. Again, you have erectile dysfunction. Good guys, you have this crappy, old, lazy woman. And what do you know? The next girl you had was, um, you went to the Bunny Ranch in Las Vegas where plenty of the porn stars go there and you can buy them and fuck them for however much. You can have a sexual encounter for them. Oh, you didn't have erectile dysfunction. The only time you would is if you had like performance anxiety and you just got nervous. But oh, what do you know? This really attractive young woman who is making it a point to do what she thinks you want and then she's com comfortable asking you what you like. All the stuff you're supposed to do in regular sex. You're just, what do you like? Hey, wh wh what do you like? Oh, you didn't have erectile dysfunction. Yeah, she wasn't answering the phone in the middle of it or or complaining that this or asking me to turn off the lights or apologizing for stretch marks. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff that gives you erectile dysfunction. A woman is not satisfied with herself and makes you have to encourage her over it. So again, yes, I've had erectile dysfunction and I've been the sexual champion of plenty of people. I don't res accept responsibility for being the sexual dud and the having dysfunction that's the environment i don't accept for being a champion that has everything to do with them not realizing how the average person you meet could be a fantastic sexual partner if you're willing to be comfortable and mutually respectful and comfortable enough to say oh i like that oh no i don't like that oh why not oh because of this i was always taught this oh okay i'll try it. comfortable mutually respectful you're going to have a good time it's that simple. No, it's not that simple. You need neuroscience. The guy in a minute is going to say, you need neuroscience. And no, you need pills. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm not exceptional. And I've had great sex with plenty of women. Okay. So number three, another reason why uh, erectile dysfunction is not very known in the um, healthcare. And here we are at one hour, 17 minutes. Oh, number three is men don't talk. Um, Men don't talk about it. They don't want to admit that they, they have uh, ED. No guy wants to admit it. Uh, and another thing he said about that is, we humans are often blind to cause and effect, especially if we don't want to see it. So what his aim here is to say, like, the men don't talk about it. They, they, and we as humans are blind to cause and effect. He's saying, what he's trying to say is, men don't want to see the connection between porn and erectile dysfunction. When really it's, Society does not want to see the connection between men's sexual dissatisfaction and the socially engineered sexual worthlessness of so many of our culture's women. Meaning, again, that he's saying that if you don't want to see it, you can be blind to cause and effect. But he's trying to say that, you know, guys, they, they watch porn, so then they can't get it up, and you know, they, but they don't want to admit that that's why. Meanwhile, it's like guys aren't satisfied enough to have an erection around this girl. Oh no, but you know you're supposed to be, and because the society doesn't want to see, well, she's crappy at sex. Well, look at her; she's she's out of shape, or she's lazy, or whatever it is. Oh no, a real man can get it up, no matter how sexually undesirable the woman is. Good luck. And um, got for partners, sexual worthlessness. So instead, send the men. Uh, oh, so instead of just telling the men, like, yeah, you need to find a woman that you can actually appreciate sexually, and you need to get better um, estimation of what constitutes a worthwhile woman. You, men got crap priorities, anyways. But 
women and men are pretending that it's enough to just get rid of porn. That won't solve the problem. We need men to have better priorities and we need women to have better priorities to where they take any responsibility at all for being sexual for themselves or for the man. No, the man is supposed to be this person who can make her come. Only rapists really think like that. I'm going to make you enjoy sex. No, you can help someone to come. You can't make someone come. It might seem like a petty difference, but pay attention. So what you should be doing instead is, uh, or what they do instead is to send men through the, ha the human hamster wheel of blaming himself when porn introduces him to sexual standards for women. And so, um, he, he'll say like, oh, not all women fear and shame me in sexual contexts. Instead, there are hot teenagers in the world who are you know, willing to be sexually comfortable. Wow, suddenly, you know, all my sexual options, I can't get erections for them. And the men that buy into that, they have erectile dysfunction. And one of the things that the Gary Wilson also mentions is, he says, I want to point out that the omnipresence of Viagra creates the impression that erectile dysfunction is normal. It's just around so much, so much medicine. You just, well, I guess people you know, typically have it. And he says it's not normal. And I actually agree. All in all, I actually think this guy, Gary Wilson, is, is on the right track trying to fix. He means well is what I should say. But he is a self-righteous dinosaur when it comes to facing reality as evidence when he starts to talk about neuroscience. Uh, number four is healthcare providers may not yet be aware of the latest neuroscience. Uh, not aware of how porn's countless novelty and endless variety can affect the brain. And of course what he means is porn's countless novelty, like novel, like interesting, and endless variety, like, oh, lots of different women. It can affect the brain of the human doings, the men, not human beings, human doings, who should not be distracted from their sex lives of little or no novelty or variety. Again, we compare this to, there's the gay gene that makes you gay. You know what there also is? Let's just pretend that is true. There's the gene that tells you not to settle down with one dissatisfying woman, like, uh, oh, she's not satisfying at all, but I'm going to settle down with her, be monogamous, and not want novelty or variety. There's actually a gene that tells you not to do that. It's called the gene of not wanting to settle down and be exclusive. We see that in nature. They'll have sex with whoever the fuck they can. Nevertheless, we're impossibly pretending that the problem is porn introduces variety, and men shouldn't have any frame of reference for variety. It's like the, the apple in the Garden of Eden. Don't eat this apple of internet porn that will actually show you what the world is like. Oh, what do you mean? I could find three different kinds of teenagers that look exactly how I want. Don't worry, over 18 or whatever your arbitrary number is. Three different kinds of teenagers who are sexually dynamic and not full of shame. Wow, that really ruins it for this old, old being, anything over 26, 23. Old, sexually shame-filled woman yeah she doesn't quite do it for me anymore always wanted to turn the lights on or pull the sheets up or or the woman that, that is past her prime so always she wants to talk about the glory days when handsome men wanted her so i'm having to hear about her exes and she's a mess that's the the problem the latest neuroscience tells us about the the, what the effect on the brain of of novelty and variety in these men who should have no novelty or variety uh, and again, he, he um, talks about neuroscience. He says, see, good advice depends, good advice for erectile dysfunction and by extension sexuality. Good advice depends on being up to date on the latest neuroscience. So imagine this person impossibly is like a priest saying, no, no, you can't understand the word of God that's written on this paper for some reason. But I can show you what it means. So instead, no, you, you can't, as a sexual person, just understand that you need to be honest, have good priorities, be with someone you can respect and who you have enough self-respect to expect mutual respect from. You just need to respect the person and be open with them and you'll have good sex. No, no, it's you need neuroscience and I have to interpret the neuroscience results and that's how you become sexual. That's where I ended it. I just realized, you know, I ended it at 7.08 of the video. 
I'm done with somebody once they say you need neuroscience in order to give people advice about sexuality. Impossibly, I'm not at all up to date with the latest neuroscience, and yet I could give you some pretty good advice on how not to be miserable sexually. Don't compare your partner to every other person that you think you want. Don't want something just because society tells you you want it. Don't assume because someone, you know, don't assume this girl tells me, oh, I like it hard. and uh, Oh, then the next girl I'm with, whoa, girls like it hard. Don't assume because this person or these people or everyone tells you women want it this way or guys want it this way. Don't assume that you can extend that to the person you're with. You take people as individuals. You learn about them. You actually connect with them. Connect with them. Woo! You connect with individuals. You'll have a good time sexually. You try to avoid real intimacy. No, I know these techniques. Don't worry. I'll do this. Uh, okay. Yeah, you'll force someone into orgasm sometimes. But, oh, no, watch. I, her, uh, no, I'll get a crazy blowjob. And then, whoa, she gave me the craziest blowjob. And I'm kind of done with her. Hey, I don't know any neuroscience. And yet I can tell you, going down those dead ends won't help. Buying into the idea that you want somebody, as a woman, you want somebody who you can wrap around his finger, like your, your finger. Oh, I can get him to do whatever I want. I got boobs and he's sexually, um, what is the word? Um, damn. <sighs> Momentum. Deprived. He's sexually deprived. So like even my boobs, my old, um, what do they have? Uh, stretch marks. And I don't care about these things, but I'm just the, the, the mindset of a man who would, like uh, so sexually deprived and the, and the woman like old stretch marks. She knows it's not what she what he wants, but oh, I can control him with the girls. Then eventually, once he actually has options, isn't so deprived. It's like, oh, she has all these flaws. Again, the idea that they're flaws is terrible. But I'm saying the whole mentality that you're going to be able to control this guy forever with your charms. You know, it's not real. But plenty of women go for that and they create erectile dysfunction in the men. Plenty of men. Oh, I can't tolerate this person, but she's hot when she fakes everything. Don't do that. And you'll end up satisfied. You'll end up with more time to invest in people who you actually appreciate. Hey, what do you know? No neuroscience and I could give you good advice. So I, I ended at 708. Uh, he says, um, oh, oh, because the last thing he says is historically there has been a paradigm, like a, a way of thinking. If you have a problem like erectile dysfunction, it was caused by guilt or shame. No way, he says. If that were the case, erectile dysfunction would have shown up immediately in porn users. And what I say is erectile dysfunction does show up in plenty porn users as soon as anyone becomes aware of them. And this is the only reason that uh, any of the bad advice that this guy is giving, the only reason it flies, is that nearly no one who is addicted to porn, like, oh man, I, I need porn in order to enjoy myself because I've surrounded myself with stuff I dislike, so now I'm just going to stay over here with porn. That's the only way they could ever sit and, and listen to this person say, you know what your problem is? You need these pills, this, that, and the other thing. Well, maybe it's that she's crappy at sex or ugly. How dare you? No. Anybody who is addicted to porn, once they leave their addiction in a principled way and say, like, I'm not addicted so much as I really like it and it's a nice vacation from the sexual tedium of my partner. They would be able to articulate, much as I have here, how, no, it's not really a disease not to be able to get it up with a sexually dissatisfying woman. Nevertheless, the people who buy into the idea that it can't be guilt or shame. They certainly have their work cut out for them because they say things like, if, if it was guilt or shame, the erectile dysfunction would have shown up in porn users, as he says. It happens right away. If I'm here using porn, oh gosh, as soon as someone comes in, oh, erection is dead. It's not like the movies where it shows the teenager and then awkwardly and then he still has the erection. No, it's like you lose everything. You, are not, you have erectile dysfunction. Because, yeah, all the shame and guilt comes right in. It is absolutely everything to do with shame, guilt, and not living up to the expectations of, as a guy, being able to make her enjoy sex. As a woman, being able to command his attention with your holes. Yeah, 
That will make you sexually dysfunctional, erectile dysfunction, and frigid, which of course, you know, back in the day, being frigid meant a woman who can't get it up, in so many words. Well, that's ridiculous. Men need to just focus on the woman's body more and do more of what she likes. Right. Likewise, erectile dysfunction is ridiculous. Women or men or whoever the guy's with himself needs to focus on himself, whether using porn or otherwise. Last thing I'll say, and this is the last bit, because this is the effect that this kind of ridiculous thinking has on popular culture. I have a friend who talked about uh, the other night. She, this is the reason I made this video, really, is for her. This friend is talking about a friend she has, this a woman who has never enjoyed the handful of sexual counter, encounters she's had with a handful of guys. So now she thinks she's asexual. And then later, actually, the, the newest news is she thinks she's transgendered. Like, maybe I just want to be a different gender. All because of the limiting of sexual options. Back before the internet, you could limit sexual op options. You could say, like, no, like, I, we're all here in this village, and all the women wear this kind of clothes, and so that's what you get. Be happy. Then all of a sudden, you're like, dude, Japanese point of view, or whatever. You couldn't, you didn't know what you were missing. There was no Jenna Hayes, Jenna Jameson. I'm reading. And, of course, the best porn stars of them all, you couldn't be exposed. Amateurs. As I mentioned, amateurs, the idea that a random, regular girl or guy, if that's what you're into. The random people can be sexually awesome. Yes, internet, how dare you raise men's expectations high enough to where he actually expects to enjoy sex. That's what we have. We have a situation where, well, no, I have all these limited options, which you can't do anymore because of the internet. And so what people are thinking is, okay, this is my sexual world. I must be asexual. Because again, and this is real world, this is my friend's friend, a girl I know, her friend, who's a girl, had crappy sex with a handful of people, never enjoyed it, is telling my friend, yeah, I never enjoy it and I just wait for it to be over. You know, some common stuff among sexually retarded people. I think I might be asexual. Whoa, that's where you lost me. You can have crappy sex with a handful of people, and that doesn't mean you're asexual. It means those people suck at sex, or you suck at sex. Or you've been raised in a culture that shames and guilts you out of even considering good sex or enjoying sex. It doesn't make you asexual. Then all of a sudden, I must be transgendered. I must be asexual. Running around looking for this, some elaborate excuse rather than, oh no, actually I must be in a culture full of self-deceiving sexual retards who want to shame me out of enjoying sex. Not realistic. Uh, not healthy, I should say. Not healthy at all, and to that person, if she reads it, I know my friend will read it, or, or see this. Copy. Don't buy the hype. Men don't have erectile dysfunction, unless they choose to. The dysfunction of them, I don't feel like getting it up. Choose asexuality, that's fine. Choose to be transgender, but don't do it because you had a handful of crappy experiences. Well, no, I didn't have a handful. I was with like 12 people. I say it like this, when people say men are this way, or women are this way, or sexuality is this way, I say, look, I know you, how many people you've been with, 800,000, because you know they've been with like six, but let's just pretend they had, no, with, even with the 800,000 people you've been with, it's not very realistic, because you haven't been with them in what we call a random sample, meaning you haven't been with different cultures, different sensibilities, different religions, different races, no, you've just been with four girls from your neighborhood or five guys and you prefer military guys or you prefer white guys or black guys so you've been with five guys oh I might be asexual because my vast experience again even with 800,000 people you couldn't be saying oh no guys are this way I've had plenty of experience not 800,000 but but close I've had plenty of experience and I never engage someone and like see some woman and be like, huh, I bet she likes this thing that worked on these other women. I am prolific and I am the champion of plenty sexual women, of plenty women, the sexual champion. And I've had plenty think, oh, he must have erectile dysfunction because he's not into me. I've been the champion. I can make girls have orgasms, but even I don't look at him and say like, hmm, 
I'm going to assume she likes it rough, or assume she likes it soft, or assume anything. I am the champion because I ask the questions, and I give them exactly what they want. Or if they don't, if they say they want such and such, we talk about it, and then I, you know, give them some more information, which is useful to be able to, like, like push them a little further, because they don't always know what they want, but typically they do. And at the very least, they don't, they, <clears throat> they know what they don't want. So I don't go into it saying, like, oh... She's a big chick, so she must be deep, so she wants it hard. Or she's a black chick, so she must want it wild. Not a useful way to be. Dehumanizing people into this caricature that you heard about and then trying to fuck them into ecstasy. Doesn't work like that. But it does in television. Okay. You're going to end up mentally erectile dysfunction. Take it from the sexual champion, the sexual god, the sexual king, you know, whatever, amongst a bunch of sexual retards. Just have mutual respect, enough respect for yourself and the person to actually talk things out, acknowledge and work with any sexual retardation that you've developed from our culture, ignore the advice of these professionals who tell you all about how, no, you need neuroscience to understand how to get off, and don't scapegoat these false causes of pornography or the guy's dick wasn't big enough or the chick's tits weren't big enough so I couldn't get it up or tits were big all that stuff speaks towards your own sexual retardation in the end erectile dysfunction in porn there's no evidence to suggest there's a causal relationship how about that Gary Wilson back to the drawing board you have very thin terrible science for those of you that in, that enjoy this hour and a half of talking you could have you could have been watching a romantic comedy and seen seen the real sex world where men get humiliated and hurt and it's romantic and comedic. You've sat through an hour and 36 minutes of this, so likely you will be um, very interested in this from here on out, uh, any other things I talk about on the subject. So I will be taking a look at yourbrainonporn.com, seeing what other nonsense there is on here. Um, I do have a video up of, as you know, because you're some crazy diehard fan, a video up of, of suggest a video topic for me. You can find it in my videos. Mention that you saw this video and, and give, give good reasons for why you want a certain topic. And you have priority because I actually value the people who are going to sit through an hour and a half video. I value what you want to hear uh, more on. Because as I've mentioned in my suggest topic video, I have about a thousand videos that I've just, oh, I'll make a video of this. I've got a lot of things from my experience and from learning from other people, a lot of things I'm willing to talk on. And um, your priority is, is um, or, or your preference is a priority because you actually appreciate and can sit through an hour and 37 minutes of me carrying on. So um, your feedback will be more appreciated and your um, preference for what to see next will, will also be more so um, considered, especially if you give good reasons why you would want a certain topic or why you suggest a topic altogether. As it is now, I am going to leave and go read about yourbrainonporn.com and relish in the fact that I am a sexual champion, something like that.